everyone. <laughs> okay, we're rolling, Amanda. Um, yeah. Amanda Buzz is back with me again. And as all of you know, I'm not big into huge introductions. I like to get right into it. So today we are, I have a few questions for uh, Amanda. Um, and then she has, she has some stuff for us too. Um, so what's happened is um, the beautiful thing about you coming on to all these channels is people are sending me questions. And obviously they're questions that I, I don't know, like, you know, really don't know. And the captive spirit one led to somebody contacting me and asking me a couple of questions. And so I thought that we would start with that today. And then we'll go from there. So the first question was, are you familiar or have you worked with anyone regarding Project Montauk or Project Oak Tree? Okay, Project Montauk is, I have read up about that and listened to survivors speak about it. Uh, I haven't personally worked with somebody around that, but I do know that Dan Duvall has. And um, he's done some very good work um, around that. And it is, wow, it's to do with time machines, um, going back in time, going forwards in time, and how they would use children to actually go and get DNA back in time. And they, they try to get into the, well, this was reported by a survivor that they tried to go back in time to the time of Jesus, and they tried to get the DNA of Jesus. So they tried to cancel the whole crucifixion and everything that Jesus did. I mean, it, it sounds ridiculous, but God would not allow them access to that time slot. And when they got there, Jesus met with the children, and he actually ministered to them, and a lot of the children didn't want to go back. You know, they didn't <laughs> want to go back to this horrible world. That's and so beautiful. So, That's so gosh, beautiful. Man. Oh my gosh. But then kind yeah. of like wild that they were able to reach back. Yeah. Well, the children could go because they, the, the grown-ups couldn't do it. Um, you know, it was reported that the grown-ups um, freaked out and they couldn't, they, they couldn't handle doing that. But the children, the they don't really understand and they're very pure and like innocent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus said, bring the, let the children come to me. So <laughs> from any know, time zone <laughs> yeah, he had, or he time had period, period rather. Yeah. Wow. So he just, he just said that the children fell in love with Jesus and they just didn't want to go back to this horrible life that they were leading and having to do all this dirty work, you know, for the cult. So um, it was just after Second World War that they went into the Montauk. And, um, and, and it's very off-planet stuff. So it's Mars and, you know, all these different planets um, where they were off-planet doing things. And then they would also go forward in time, um, which was interesting because, um, you know, the, Dan asked the question about, um, you know, how you invest your money. So if you can go forward and you can see what is going to come right. up, and what is going to get, make a lot of money, and you start building on that, then you're going to get pretty rich. So um, it's like they want to control the time, you know, whether it's past or whether it's future, because we live in the now. And, um, you know, we know that our God is, is a God of yesterday, today, and forever. I mean, he's outside of time. So oh, for sure. Um, you know, so they, they were trying to manipulate and um, do all sorts of stuff, which they're still doing to this day. I mean, they're still doing it. So it's part of the whole Nazi, you know, f a flow on of, of the Third Reich and the Nazis. So that's that's what was going on with Montauk. And, and so um, do they do the time travel in other um other ones that aren't the Montauk project? Um, are there other ones that you've you've experienced? Because um, I know you've had like the mermaids yes. and the different people. Okay, so you have yeah. seen this, not yeah. just in the Montauk project That's or heard right. of it. Yeah, okay. That's, yeah, yeah. So the Montauk pro, uh, project is a specific 
project that they were working on, you know, like um, Mockingbird, you know, all, all those kind of things. So it was a specific pro project. Um, but they still they still carrying on with that type of thing. And so, wow. um, you know, when we work with survivors, we have to check whether they, you know, where are they on the timeline? And so if, how long into their lives are they able to move about in another timeline? Because, I mean, I, I'm guessing at some point they become the adult that can't do it either, right? Well, what they couldn't do was was the whole thing around Jesus, you know, to try and go back and change what happened at the cross. That's what they tried to get them to do. And, of course, the grown-ups, um, the spirit knew that you can't do that, you know, um, and that's why they backed off. But the children went. Um, so it was a specific project. It was a specific assignment. But they, they, they can move, you know, they can move backwards and forwards um, in, you know, you think it's just, it's science fiction. You think it's a movie, you know, you can't yeah. think that it's, it's real. Yeah. And then somebody asked the question, so are you saying that once um, in the project that it stays and, and that um, it's a part of that person? Um, obviously, the memories will be a part of you. Definitely. And, and the trauma is locked up. You know, that's, that's a very important, um, you know, th that the memories are locked up, you know, so um, that's scary because, you yeah. know, once trauma memories are locked up, that's, that's what makes you ill. And um, then what, what is very interesting, um, what we have also found is that they, um, they have a memory bank um, of, of, of emotions. So they call it an emotional bank. So they would, they would collect data on a survivor or even a non-survivor, even, you know, just a counselor. And they would pick up, because everything is energy, everything is frequency. Um, you know, it's quantum. That's, that's the world that we live in now. Totally agree. Totally agree. So, so that's yeah. why it's so important, you know, to be trained up and to understand how to pray around this. Um, but well, and that's what the, I was going to ask because so you know these are specific questions coming from actual people, right? So, so this yeah. is somebody that was probably involved in this project or or, or suspicious that they were, and so um, the last one we did where we where you taught people how to do the petition for the captive spirits, that's their exit out, even if they don't have a counselor or don't have access to someone like you, right? Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. So what um, we've got a, a, a prayer that we've put together specifically um, for to shield yourself against the quantum fields. So um, it's it's called um, a, the quantum shield faith, the the prayer of faith. Um, you know, to do with a sh a shield that you put around yourself. So we've put that together so they can download that. Oh, um, good. Yay. Right, that to be protected. And is this is this the is this the same one that's from Dan Duval or is this one that's from no, your it's ministry? One we, we've written, yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and then um, the next question that they had was, um, had you heard of pairing or twinning um, in in you know with any of your your victims? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's that's what they that's the protocol. Um, they, you know, so uh, when they do the impregnation, you know, when they do the conception, um, it can be that they will do the conception of, of um, you know, the splicing. So they've got a sperm, whoever they've chosen, you know, around. We're going to go through a little case study um, of a person that was impregnated and, um, well, of a person that was the baby um, that went through this process. So maybe that would clarify things. But what they do is it's not just twins, um, but they would take siblings. So um, when they have the sperm and the ovum that they've spliced and they've put it 
you know, all the attributes and the characteristics and whatever to make the super human um, from the royals. So they would really plan who this child would be and what the attributes would be. Um, so if they want a beauty queen, so they actually determine what the child will uh, eventually in what um, line of work they would go into, you know, so if they plan for them to be a therapist, for example, which is, which is what happens, then um, they will be trained. And if they try and go into any other line, they will be severely punished. Um, there's this one lady that was telling her story, which is fascinating. She's, um, uh, I call, I call the older ones, the golden oldies. And um, that's so cute. I love that you make it fun for them too, because they've gone through so much. That's so nice yeah. to keep it lighthearted. Yeah. Yeah. So she was a golden oldie and um, she was actually programmed by uh, Joseph Mengele, Dr. Joseph Mengele. And um, so, you know, this whole little village was um, was visited by him and, and everyone in this little village was kind of like attended the rituals. So it was huge. And um, she's written a book called The Enslaved Queen. And her name is Wendy Hoffman. And she... Um, is, is she speaks very powerfully and uh, re really opens up, you know, that world and the the run up to all the modern stuff that we see today. So so even even the older ones, even the golden oldies, but they are royals. They all updated to the to the the the, the most advanced quantum that the younger ones are. So they go for updates regularly. So they they are up to date with with everything. It's not it's not a question of oh well they were tra you know programmed back in the fifties so you know sixties so that means you know they're not as as sharp as our young ones. No, the the updates are there. So they regularly go for updates. So and then do they separate them like um, once they, they have the So what's the point of the twins or the siblings? What what does that get? What advantage okay. does that give them? All right. So um, when when we look at our case study, we're going to look at a guy. I've just called him Dan and we're going to um, look at his conception. And then what happens is once they've got the sperm and the ovum and conception has taken place, they can then freeze them. Um, so they put them into a frozen state, and then when they take them out um, and do rituals with them, and this is the most important thing about royal programming, which if you don't understand and you miss the step, you're not going to get full integration. You're still going to have them all over the place. And that is that Satan has created a what they call, what they report as a blue ball, a blue ball experience. So they're in a frozen state. There's the baby is already there and they are conceived. And now they get put into a blue ball, which is a light source. It's a supernatural um, pod, almost a, a pod. Like a force field? Oh, like yeah. a pod. Okay like a pod that they get put into but of course it's it's a ball you know it's just a little ball because they just little cells so then they get put into a, a female's womb one of the grand dom mothers into her womb and then they could be taken um, all over the world to different portals of the world and they then um, would release a little bits of their essence because they talk about them being like dust. That's all that's, that they are. It's dust. And so they would release little bits of their essence in all the portals of the world, which then gives them legal right to travel to those portals as they grow up. They'll go and find their dust which belongs to them, which is part of their essence. And so if you don't go and gather up the dust 
from all these different portals and places wherever they've been spread and from parallel universes, you know, and things like that. You, you're not going to, and this is all in the blue ball state. This is not even implantation yet. This is pre-implantation. So it is so important that um, the counselors should must understand what they actually do with them. Because a lot of, I mean, I did the same. You, you start working with them from, say, conception. And then, um, you know, then you think, okay, implantation. And then birth, you know, and then you go on. And, and, and we missed a whole section of, of knowing where the worst scattering took place and the deepest and um, layered, you know, and then, and then to go and gather up out of all the portals from parallel universes, gather up the essence, you know, ask God to, to, to um, send his angels with godly magnets. <laughs> you know, I, I, try, I pray to think, okay, Father, how are they, how are they going to collect these, you know, these, these particles that, uh, that's essence? So that they, they they can collect, and then when you gather all of that, that's that's when you sort of bring all of that in, that which was in the when they were in the blue ball state. So in the blue ball, they can be put into a male as well. So there are many that are reporting they were in Hitler's body, they were in Mengele's body. So they 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 would say, um, but I was at. At the con I was at the concentration camp, Second World War, but it can't be because I am so, you know, I, this is my age and I didn't live then, right. you know, so how could that so be confusing. possible? So confusing. Yeah, but if you're a 44 project, you know, if you're part of the Hitler project, which is part of what we're going to be talking about, then it means that, um, you know, when you were in a blue ball state, they took you to the concentration camps and you were there. And they downloaded death energy onto you in your wow. in the blue ball, you know. So it's it's it sounds bizarre, but it sounds like something out of Harry Potter, you know. Like there's yeah, that absolutely. little golden thing, and it's they take it everywhere. And I mean, it's just wild. Yeah. And and so um, so the the ball then could could last for years, yes. decades before yeah. they're actually born. And just for clarity, because yeah. um, I've heard you say royals so many times. When you're speaking of royals, are you meaning specifically from that the UK, like the monarchy, or are you saying all of the bloodline families, the 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 royals, the kings, the kings of the earth, the kings of the earth? Yeah. So okay. that could be east or west, you know. Okay. Um, where the kings are, it can be, it can be Eastern, you know, whether it's Chinese or, you know, their royalty, it can be the West. We work a lot with the West, obviously, because that's where we are. Um, but I did work uh, when we, um, we did work with, with, with somebody that um, was from the East, which was very interesting, you know, so yeah, because we're in this side of the world, you know, and then, of course, the African um, stuff, which is also the royals, you know, there's a lot right. of that. But I, I, you'll understand it in the case study. Okay, good. And so should I ask you the last two questions that I had about yeah. the oak tree and the it, um, freezing the DNA? Because you kind of answered that, and I don't know if you're going to answer it in the case study. Okay. Um well, when when they when they bring the 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 sperm and the ovum and after the blue ball, that that child could be frozen for for however long they want the time, and then they can actually start splicing um, that conception, and they can then make siblings, identical siblings. And depending on what the plan is, depending on what they want to do, but a lot of the survivors report four, five siblings, identical siblings. And so the guy that we're going to look at the case study, um, he had four brothers, identical. And so they, 
you know, they went, they had their, their names, they had their positions. The one stayed in the cult permanently. The other one was allowed to become a Christian, but there was a demonic plan in his life, which is the, what we'll be talking about. Um, and so, um, wow. you know, then what they do is those that are, that are, um, there's one that's chosen, the cho chosen it is the one that has to, to do everything that Satan wants. But they need fill-ins. For example, if they take the child out of a family, out of a surrogate family, and they take them to Antarctica or they take them to Jerusalem and they go and do programming with them, they have to put a replacement into that child, the one that they've taken out, place. Yes, yes. To, to while they're teach. training yeah. them or whatever. Yes, yeah, the, got it. The, the mom and dad won't know. Um, the teachers won't know. And it's like the child doesn't go, the, the child isn't missing. The child is there all the time because they're swapping them in and out. And so they work with the plan. And then when, at a certain stage, they would say, okay, it's time to sacrifice this one. And then, you know, they, they, they would take one out. And then later on, as things develop and they need more power, and say the person starts going for therapy and starts leaking, then they need blood to, to shut that, that, that survivor down, to not talk. And then it, they will start sacrificing, you know, to, to, to silence the survivor. So they've does got it, back Does it hurt them also? Like, can they, can they feel the experience? Oh, yes. They're symbiotically bonded. Okay. Because they, wow. they, 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 I mean, they, they twin, they right. siblings, you know, in, and, and, and they were once one, but now they separated, but they still symbiotically bonded. So what they would do is they'd keep one in the cult. And then the survivor would report to us and say, Oh, I am suffering. I'm having horrific, um, attacks. I'm having headaches. Um, you know, all sorts of things happening. And what happens is because they symbiotically bonded with their sibling, they are busy torturing the sibling in the cult and projecting the torture onto the one that we're counseling. You know, and, and they don't understand what's going on. And we pray and we pray and we pray and it's not stopping. And we don't no. understand what's going on. But meantime, they've got a backup. So they've kept that one in the cult and then they torture that one and then just project it onto the one that you're working with. Right. Do they ever like um, take the, one of the siblings and have them born in like the 1940s and another one that's exactly the same come in the 1960s? Because you know how there's so many, um, they show pictures of a lot of uh, celebrities and they show them like, this is a person that so randomly looks just like them in another time period. Yeah, yeah, they do that. Um, we've, we've worked with, a, 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 well, they, they were they're twins, but they were supposed to be, they were both supposed to be female. But then when, as things turned out, the one was a little boy and the one was a little girl. But the little girl was born about 15 years ahead of her brother. No, but about 12 years ahead of her brother. And um, so you'd never say they're twins because they totally, you know, you'd never speak to, about them as being twins. Because, again, going back in time in the past, we know that Joseph Mengele worked with twins he was he specialized in twinning and his whole forte was twins and twins and checking you know if he does this to this one and that one and what happens so you you get a lot of stories around twins um wow. but but now what they're doing you know now with a younger generation now we have you know say the sister is 35 and and the twin brother is 20 23 you know, so so you that you'd never think they yeah, twins. Never, yeah, never. They, they kept the brother frozen longer and just did the implantation later. Wow. And um, you know, it it was just 
just by God's grace that as we were working with both of them, suddenly, you know, all of this came forward. And well, so and thank God it did because it's such a it it now it really teaches you that you can't just pray. You got to literally pray quantum, like outside yeah. of time and space. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And so what about my my last question was the the oak tree. I know the oak tree yeah. project or the oak tree has something to do with Montauk, but I wasn't sure, you know, how or if you knew anything about that. Yeah, the oak tree um, is very, very strong in Druidism. And as we're going to look at this case study, you will see that the Druids were the ones who actually, um, you know, they, they, they were the ones that carried this whole thing about mind control. And um, what, what's very interesting is that the oak trees are planted all over the world and the acorns are being used, the seed. And so we've got oak trees here in South Africa and the seed came from England. So it's the mother and the daughter and then you have all the globalists that come to South Africa and then they come and they, they do the rituals here um, on the farms, you know, these very wealthy wine farms that belong to, to the globalists. So um, we've, we've had a lot, a lot to do with the oak trees. And, you know, when, when people would have the saying about, um, oh, I'm so glad this and this didn't happen to me, touch wood. Have you heard that? Oh, yeah. Or knock on wood. That's touch the oak tree. Oh. It's this whole druid thing. It's, it's to do superstition. Druidism. Yeah. Wow. Druidism. I yeah. love learning stuff like that. <laughs> I probably will never say it again either. <laughs> I want to wash myself of all that weird stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, well then, so do you need me to share um, yes, to please. share the screen so that you can tell us all about this case study yeah and okay you should you should be able to now good thank you yeah thank you there we go great okay so um for the viewers that don't know they can get all my material online on from our website i'm sure that you've you've put that up and everybody knows about it all right, this is to do with our advanced training. Um, you know, when we train counselors, this is one of the lessons that we teach them because they want to understand now, you know, why, why is all of this going on? What is behind it? And uh, where did it all begin? And how do I know if I'm a royal or not? You know, so many survivors say, how do I know um, if I'm a royal? So I just want us to look at the position of, of DRD, the DID system in the heavenlies. And um, so to, to understand <laughs> that there's, there's a scripture in Isaiah 25 that speaks about, um, it speaks about the uh, veil that's over the nations and that has blinded the people. And so um, how they actually cast the veil is through the survivors all over the world. So that's why they have to be on every continent and the portals are there and they then weave like a spider web over the, the nations. And so every SRA person who is still cult invested has the DID system in second heaven where Satan has his throne. Now I'm going to explain just a little bit what second heaven looks like so that they understand. The cult monitors every person that they have invested in. And it's interesting, this web, they are all interconnected. If every one of the survivors are interconnected. So if we pray for somebody here in South Africa, it's like we're shaking this web. And this then alerts, it, it has a ripple effect and it alerts all, all around to say there's trouble, there's trouble, send, send reinforcements, send help. And so it's important to seal off your room um, so that you don't get flooded, you know, with, with all sorts of human spirits coming in and, and weapons being, uh, you know, aimed at you and because that, that can really throw you off so you've got to know how to pray before the time to seal off everything 
so that you're shielded while you you while you're praying with a person, because everybody's being monitored, and they have invested so much into a survivor. You know, they have put a lot of money. They have the top programmers. They paid a lot of money to have them programmed. They have invested so much time. They have put in so much torture and and all the programs and everything that they've done. So they're not going to just let an SRA person walk away. It just doesn't happen. You can't just walk away from them. It is a fight until death. It is really, it's a warfare. And they get them addicted, specifically sexually addicted is the big thing. They get them so sexually addicted to the Nephilim that it's very, very difficult for them to give it up. It's not easy to give it up. Okay, so as they are losing power, as the cult is losing power over the person, they want to reinforce their control by re-traumatizing the person. So then they would uh, come in again and they would, they would capture the person and or come at night or whatever and take them and, and you know, re, re-traumatize them so that they can just put those programs back again. They don't and would that be would person. that be in like the third dimension or would this be in the second heaven like second, that they're doing this? Second heaven is where uh, all the warfare is taking okay. place. So third heaven is God's heaven. Okay, right. that's where God's throne is, and um, you know you hear John that speaks and he says, "I was in the spirit, and I was taken, and he was taken to third heaven." Now a lot of Christians talk. And they would say, oh, I'm so happy I'm in seventh heaven. <laughs> and that's a new age heaven. <laughs> don't, don't totally, know. totally you know, have heard of that. Only yeah. Three heaven. <laughs> yeah, so there is a, there's only three heavens in the Bible. Now, the second heaven is the place where, where the warfare takes place. This is where... God releases his angels from third heaven with an assignment and um, they have to fight their way through second heaven. And in second heaven, the fallen angels that fell with Satan are guarding and trying to block God's angels from doing God's work. And so this, it's very interesting when you read the book of Daniel, Um, first heaven is what we see, the sun, the moon, stars, the galaxies, what we see. And so, you know, people have worshipped the moon, uh, Freemasons worship the sun, the witch, witches worship the moon, and the new moon and the full moon, and, you know, all, all the, that's how they draw their powers. They have constellations, galaxies, astrology, all of that stuff is in first heaven. Now, we are here on earth. But God says when we pray, we are seated with him in heavenly places. So although we physically on earth, in the spirit, we are in third heaven. So we are two places at the same time. And that's what's so exciting. So it looks like. Yeah, that goes back to the quantum, like really understanding that that's possible. Yeah. 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 So here we are sitting on earth praying, but I'm actually seated with Christ in heavenly places. And I can hear what he's praying and I can agree with him on earth. So I agree, whatever is being prayed in heaven, I agree on earth. So Daniel, the book of Daniel tells us a story that he was praying. And he was, um, as he was praying, they they had to, um, the angel came after 21 days and said to, to Daniel, listen, you know, God actually heard you from the first day, but I had to fight the Prince of Persia. And when I go back, I have to fight the prince of of Greece. And so it's the second heaven warfare where the fallen angels are fighting against God's angels. So that's where all the warfare takes place is in second heaven. And And that's where a lot of like what's going on today in today's world is a lot of the deception and a lot of the misleading oh, here, look at this, you know, secret space program, or look at the UFOs, or, um, or like you said, like, like, raising your kundalini, what, whatever it is, a lot of it is second, second heavenly warfare, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. 
So, I mean, that's where the that's where the big fight is. And and our bloodlines is recorded and registered in second heaven. So the thing is, if if you are flowing in the prophetic, for example, or you're praying for somebody, but you've still got stuff in, in second heaven, then you're gonna give mixed seed. So you're gonna speak words that God says, but then there's going to be a mix and you could be bringing in second heaven stuff. And that's why, you know, we are so strict on, please check, check the bloodline, please clean up the bloodline because the stuff is registered there. That's where it's kept. The books are kept there. And so you've got to clear out because what we are doing as we are praying and preparing for the second coming of Jesus to come, we are busy clearing out the second heaven. We are busy making a way for him. You know, that, that John the Baptist cried out, make a way, make a way, prepare a way. And so what, that's what we are doing when we are doing intercession and we're doing warfare and we're praying on earth. We, we are making a way for God to move on earth on our behalf. And so when we don't pray, the, the angels of God don't have energy um, because we have to agree on earth what God has already spoken and released in, in third heaven. So we have to pray and to download, to get down. But we, as you pray, you are opening up a way in second heaven for God's purposes to come through. And so that's why, you know, the, the, there's a very, very good book, two books that were written by Frank Peretti, This Present Darkness and Piercing the Darkness. Um, excellent books. Um, it's, it's, now, it's a fiction story, but it's really based on the truth of the word and prayer and intercession. It is amazing. It, it really encourages, you know, you don't, you just want to start praying when you, when you read that book, it's you, you realize how important it is for us to pray. People yeah. have and got so can, can I ask one question real quick? Mm -hmm. So let's say there's a therapist, but she's also um, a very, very connected to God and a Christian woman and blah, blah, blah. But if for some reason she does not know she has bloodline, uh, royal bloodline, not regular bloodline, um, then that will absolutely hamper the work that she does with people yes. rather than actually helping them. Yes. Yes. Wow. They could actually use her. They could actually use her and channel through her. And that's what happens to in many ministries where, where you've got survivors that don't know that they're survivors, but right. they're actually in a ministry. And so... Wow. Um, yeah, well, that's that's very sad, I, and it's it's tough to face. It's tough to work through. You know, really, really tough. And so, what? How? How can I, I think you started to talk about it? But how can somebody make sure that their bloodline's clean, or that they, or, or like even because to me, even if you don't know for sure, couldn't you pray against it just in case? You can, uh, it, for sure, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Because Thank I mean, none of, none of us are squeaky clean. You know, I mean, even although you've you've prayed for years and you've dealt with a lot of stuff, we still we still sin. You know, I mean, that's what the word says. Nobody is without sin. So we've got to ask God to be our rear guard. We've got to ask God to to go ahead of us. You know, so um, it's that it's that covering prayer. You know, Father, we, wherever we have still got open doors. We ask you to come and stand in the gap and that you cover us. And Father, let me not be a channel, you know, or a vessel in Satan's hands. So it's it's really it's really uh, very important to deal with bloodline issues. Right, right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So so prayer that those books are are awesome, you know, for people to work through, and they'll be so charged to. Pray. So the hierarchy of fallen angels, Nephilim and human, it's just to understand um, how it works. So when Satan fell out of, um, when God cast him out of heaven, when he tried to cha challenge God, 
um, he took a third of the angels with him. And um, then you have the next ranking down is the Nephilim. Now, they aren't fallen angels. They are a mix of between um, the, the fallen angel and humans. So they are in between. They're de- that, what they call demigods. They are demigods. And Hitler was after this whole demigod thing. Um, you know, that's why he he did all the research and, and looking all over the place because he wanted the secret. And um, we're gonna look, we're gonna look at, at, at the whole process, you know, of Nimrod. And Hitler was after the secret of Nimrod. So we're gonna we're gonna get there because it's the whole rebuilding of Babylon. So uh, how do they get a Nephilim? How is Nephilim then created? It's the fallen angel that sees that the women are beautiful and the daughters of men are beautiful and they have intercourse with them. Now, a fallen angel doesn't um, need a body to manifest. He can come in any shape or form. He can manifest in any shape or form. And so those, if you, if you look at the ability of an angel, God's angels, when they came to, to um, uh, Abraham, and Abraham was sitting in the tent, and these men came up to him. He didn't know that he was entertaining angels. And so they were human. They looked like men. And so these fallen angels can come in a, a, a male form. And that's, you know, the question is, yeah, but how can they have sex with women? You know, they can because they, they can take on any shape or form. Wow. And then they impregnated. But now the key is it all started uh, in Genesis 3, where God said that I'm going to put enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of Satan. So that there's already a warfare going on in Genesis 3 already. And so it means that the the fallen angels have got the seed of Satan. And the women, human, have got the seed of of those that God made. They are human. So now you have a fallen angel having sex with a woman. And then what comes forth is a Nephilim, a hybrid. So it's, it's Satan's seed inside a human body all they take from the human being is is the outward body and so the the giants that were born in those days were giants they were big but today we don't they've perfected um the the creation of these hybrids and they are looking absolutely like us they look yeah. exactly like us you're gonna really need discernment to know whether this is a hybrid you're talking to or, you know, with the seed of Satan, but they, they, I have, I'll show you the guy that I bumped into. I didn't know, but anyway, we're going to end with that. Um, okay. Yeah. I, Can I, I ask a, sure. a question? So, so is there still hope? Because if they're half human, um, you know, obviously God would want them right it's not their fault that they were born this way or do you see what i'm asking it's not god's okay so it's not it's just completely defiled got it totally totally a nephilim cannot be saved okay all right so they can be nephilim little bits of 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 stuff coming down the bloodline like families that are born with six fingers and six toes which was the sign of a giant which is the sign of 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 a mix and that family really struggles spiritually um but but there's a lot more human there's a lot more humanity in in a person like that but this is a first um first generation okay so and the, the, the sad thing is for survivors is that they get, many of them are raised by Nephilim as little children. And so they believe that they Nephilim because what is on the outside, yeah. they create on the inside. So they create a Nephilim pot and they go into a terrible state when they hear me say a Nephilim can't be saved. 
And so I just want to assure every survivor that is listening and that believes that they have a part that is a Nephilim. It is, it is deception. It's a lie. They've deceived you in believing and you created a part that you believe is a Nephilim. But it's not the, the first generation full blood Nephilim that we're seeing here. It's Got the it. part that you've created and that part can be saved. And that's what I was really asking. Okay, got okay. it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we see Satan's throne in this in second heaven. Where is his throne? So um, this is very interesting. This is a little picture that God gave me um, when I was working with with the survivors to try and understand why do they want the survivor to be born again. You know, wh why? Because um, when, when you're born again, what happens is you then are seated as a believer. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So you're sitting in the red chair. So you're praying on earth, but you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. But now the cult is part of the protocol. What they do, they make sure that at 13 months, they lead that little child. They read the book of John to that little child. Now, you know, you speaking to the spirit of the child and the spirit of the child can hear and perceive and understand. Because remember, you belong to God. You are made in God's image. And so your spirit will respond. And so they will then tell you that if you accept, open your heart and, and give your heart heart to Jesus, then all this torture will stop. So, of course, that little one, as tiny as what they are, of course, they don't have the synapses of a normal brain that is now forming pathways. They're tiny. They're only 13 months. But the spirit, their spirit knows exactly what is being said because they can wow. report to you things that happen in the womb. And who's reporting? The spirit. The spirit of the person is reporting. The spirit is reporting the dust, the blue ball. It's mm -hmm. the spirit of the child. So they want that child born again. So what they do is they, they will lead the child. Now, I've made it a black chair just to, to make, yeah. you know, to show the difference. Um, they lead that child. To, to open their heart to Jesus at 13 months. And immediately when they can see that happens, because there is a connection, there is a download of the glory of God. Oh. The spirit is in light. You know, you, you, you've got God's glory. You've got God's light. And they can scan you. The cult can see that. So they wait for that to happen. And the moment that happens, they take that child and they rape the child with a false Jesus. Now the child wow. is confused. Now I've just opened my heart and I believe that this, this Jesus is going to save me out of this pain that they're putting me through. And now, now this Jesus is raping me, but they don't realize that there's been a, it's not the real Jesus. Right. And so what happens is once you're born again, you're born again. And you connected to God's spirit and God promises. He says to us in Hebrews 13, verse five, he says, I promise I will never leave you. And he says, he repeats it. I will never, I will never, I will never leave you. And so that means that when that child is born again, God is right there. And many times the survivor will ask, but where was God? When I was being raped, when I was being tortured, where was God? He was right there. Mm -hmm. He was with you all the time. He never left you. And that is the key. Why we as counselors that know God, that know Jesus, that knows the power of the Holy Spirit, why we can pray for the survivor? Because Jesus was there all the time. He stood right. and wept because of legal rights, because the parents of that child handed the child over to Satan. 
So God, it's legal right. God gave the authority to parents and said, you train up the child in the way they should go. You teach them my word. But these parents don't. They give them to Satan and they teach them Satan's ways. And they dedicate them to Satan. But God still doesn't leave them. God still doesn't leave them. And that, that is what's so powerful. That even although they go through so many death experiences over and over and over, they get raped and, and to death and then resuscitated. Jesus is there all the time. He's never, ever left. And so what they are, why they want that child to be born again is they know that if the child is born again, the child is also seated in heavenly places. So the SRA person so they have access. has got access. They don't. They've been kicked out. But through that child, they now have access. Oh, so oh. that a dirty plan, a dirty it is trick. horrible, evil, and that's but this how is where do. ignorance, you know, really and truly, where it says in the Bible to know your enemy. This is where yeah. the churches have failed because I haven't been to any churches that were teaching about the enemy, and maybe once in a blue moon there's deliverance, but it's always on the side, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very sad. Yeah. So that is the way they can infiltrate churches. They can infiltrate ministries. They can infiltrate prayer groups. They can infiltrate children's church. They can go into the worship team. They can go into the prophetic team. They can go into the intercessor team. And so because of exactly this little picture, right. to understand they have access they can speak in tongues. They can be baptized. They can look exactly like we do. But they so if somebody's praying, and let's just use the you know earth, second heavenly, third heavenly. If somebody's praying up to God, but they've had so many problems in the past and, and all that, it gets fought down in the second heavenlies before it even reaches. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. But but remember God's grace because yeah. he doesn't he he knows what every survivor has been through. He was right. there with them in the trauma. He was there. And now that they are adult, now they can start looking for help. Now, and the sad thing is, Carmen, we have so little um trained counselors that know what's going on. There are people that are willing. There are people that are trying to help, really. Right, right. But if you don't have this understanding, yeah, you know, you can be it could be up. very dangerous. Yeah, it can be so dangerous because they come into your inner circle, and they can find out everything about your marriage, about your children. They find your weak spots, and then they right. go for you. And um, yeah, I've. I, you know, I have stories of my own, you know, of, of, of attacks in our yeah. family um, yeah. and so many other of my friends. You know, we can tell stories of how we've been blasted. Um, yes. But God is faithful. You know, you've yes. just got to stay close to him. Um, so, yeah, but this, this is just to give everyone an understanding. Why do they want the child to be born again? Because right. the biggest enemy for them, the cult other Christians Gosh. and so for yep. them to be able to attack to get access right I mean you will not allow but then they a need us because I've always wondered why don't they just get rid of us all but they they can't get rid of us because we're no. the we're the door basically to That's get right. in yeah, exactly exactly and you know we, we we have the answer we do his name is Jesus we've got the answer yeah we just have so, to sort yeah, through this all is, of the, this is really, the little really things. So this yeah. makes me have another just tiny question. Um, okay. I talked a little bit about this with Cheryl Beck last week. Um, the, the difference between Kundalini and Holy Spirit can sometimes be so subtle. Yeah. So like if you're praying with somebody and they get chills, my natural uh, thought would be, oh, that's the Holy Spirit but it could actually not be the Holy Spirit. No. So how can you tell the difference? 
it's very um it's very difficult if you're not trained okay um i have I, th I think it's just years of training and experience. So if somebody mm -hmm. stands in front of me, um, I look them in the eyes and, mm -hmm. and, and there's just, my spirit just knows mm -hmm. something's going on here. Um, something's not right. We need to check this. Okay. Um, and yeah, it is, it is not easy. It is not easy. It's, but but it's something that every every person in ministry should know. They should know about this, because right. it is it's. I don't know a church that hasn't been infiltrated. Right. Absolutely. You know? I don't know probably a person that hasn't at one point in our time, and even you know I did your petition. Um, you know, of course, a couple of times since you've taught me about that, and the yeah. first time I did it that night. I had the most demonic dreams I've ever had in my whole life, never. And it just, to me, showed that I had some work to do, you know. Uh, but then the second time I did it, I, I didn't have any issues. And yeah. so I think sometimes it's a growing past things and clearing yes. and learning the same way you learn how to walk. You fall down, you yeah. get back up. Because you know, like yes. you said, at the end yes. of the day, you, you have Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. And it's not something to fear because God is so faithful, right. you know, and he's always with his children. So if, if, if you do pick up, like you've just explained, then it's a learning curve. Yeah. Then he allows you to go through stuff and he wants you to clean up because what, you know, the, the survivors are actually doing an amazing work in the church because what they are doing is chase is sending us to our knees and they are, they are helping us to pray because if everything just went honky dory and there was just yep. you know, plain sailing and I mean you only pray when there's really trouble you really you know father God you start seeking God with everything you've got and and why is there an open door what is going on you know why am I being attacked so what happens is that the Christian becomes it's it's a it's it's a double-edged sword it yes. cuts towards the Christian and it cuts towards the survivor and both of us get clean. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, that's, that's yeah. how God has intended it. So, you know, instead of running away from this, um, just say, father, what must I learn? What is the next right. learning curve? How do I grow? I need discernment. Yeah. And it's not to reject or label survivors. And that's, what's been very sad is mm -hmm. where they've been you know, labeled and people withdraw from them and, oh, you know. It's scary. It, that's very it's, sad. Yeah, yeah it, it, but it the average person doesn't have the fortitude to, yeah. to, one, have the faith to hold and stand in that authority, but two, the fortitude to not allow that fear to come in yeah. and sneak in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Carmen, the, 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 the key is if you teach and train the survivor to write the petitions and do their homework. Yes. And they, as the Christian presenter, stands in the gap for whatever the cult aligned parts, the back parts are still doing. Yes. And if they do that on a regular basis, then it 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 really breaks down a lot of the stuff that that if if you hush hush about it and that's what the mistake we made in the past we would you know just whisper about this stuff so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talk about it. so you know and, and and so we left them ignorant but yeah. now we are actually confronting them in love and saying you must realize yes you were a victim but after 12 when you go 13 you are now a perpetrator Right. And you must embrace that because you will only get better. You will only um, get get through all of this if you work as an adult, not a child. Because if you come and you cry all the time and this is all they did to me and all these bad, horrible things yeah. they did to me. Sure, yeah. you know, it did happen. But that stays, it keeps you in a victim mindset. But now, if you take them past that and you take them into adulthood, the adult parts are the ones that have the responsibility before God. 
Mm -hmm. And so they have to take the responsibility of attacking Christians, you know, of being at rituals, of killing babies. It's horrible, mm -hmm. but that's the only way. Yeah. And so that's when we in love confront them and say, we've got to face this. Otherwise, you're not going to get better. Right. Right. And then and then, you know, the the worldly way of doing it is here. Here's some more medicine, yeah. <laughs> which just, yeah. I think, it suppresses it even deeper. Um, but, right. you know, I'm not saying that there aren't times that it's, you know, I'm not a doctor. So carry on, beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so this is what Satan's throne looks like. Remember, he's a copycat and um, everything that God has put into place, he copies. So in the second heaven, he's also got a throne. And so he's got fallen angels as cherubs and seraphim around his throne, and they form the shields of Leviathan. Now, the Bible speaks about Leviathan that is so close, his, his scales um, on, on his body are so closely knitted that nothing can get in between. And so um, it is, it's very interesting um, you know, to see how the copy is here um, with Leviathan's shields around Satan. So they are assigned there to fight and protect for Satan's honor. You know, if you can call him have to have honor. So he's got to be honored and he's got to be worshipped. And so exactly like God and God's honor is protected by the cherubs and the seraphim. So now he's set up the same thing. But what he does with survivors is he also puts them in positions. Now, a lot of them shapeshift. These are royals that have been through serious, they've got high ranking stuff. And so they can actually shapeshift into dragons. And they have dragons and they fight with drag. Dragons is a big thing. Uh, dragons is a big deal. And the whole reptilian story is a big deal. So, um, what he would do is also assign survivors, the warrior parts of the survivors, to fight, to stand around him and to fight against God's angels. And so when, when uh, God's angels come to fight, to attack, to come and, and attack Satan, now he's got all of this around him. But when he puts human shields there, they stand back. Because yeah. they will never attack a human. Right. And so the, Satan uses human shields. How coward, you know, how cowardly. Oh. We've seen it happen in wars on earth, you know. We've I was seen just going to say, I've seen it in the news over and over again. That, yeah, yeah, all the virtue exactly. signaling and all the exactly. stuff they do. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And so that's that's his whole trick. So he puts the the, the survivors around him to fight and then the angels stand back so oh man I, you know the things i've heard and how clever how clever so we must be informed we must know you know how how it works in the spirit all right satan's throne um is of course then this whole web um that's now spun over the nations and that blinds us and that is what's keeping us locked in that we can't see higher, we, we, you know, to get a heavenly vision. And um, so the nations are, are under this, this spider web, this queen, and, um, you know, running all over every nation is controlled with this whole network, and everything is the quantum, you know, everything's interconnected. And then, of course, you've got the grids as well. Um, you know, which which is controlling, um, they have hubs. And so all over the world, there is control going on. And they know exactly where their people are and what they're up to. They know when they go to church. They know when God is trying to reach out to them through us. They know that. And um, so what happens is their Neshama is caught, trapped. Neshama is that part that we spoke about, about the, did I speak to you, Carmen, about the Neshama? I'm, I'm not sure. That was, on, that was on, um, on Chantal's 
Chantel. It was excellent. I, I we okay. talked about on my show though that people should go refer to it because it's okay. very powerful okay. teaching. Okay. So the Nishima is how I'm made in God's image. And so that is where he traps. He can't destroy it. He can't destroy it, but he can capture it. And and people say, how can they how can they capture a God pot? Well, do you remember when when um the ark of God was captured? by the Philistines and they took the ark and they put it in their midst and then Dagon fell on his face and his hands broke off and then his head rolled off. God, the, the, the presence of God is in the ark. They kept it. So it is, that is how they can, they, he, they cannot destroy it. They cannot kill it. They can only capture it. And so when we pray, with the survivors, we pray to get their neshama released out of second heaven, where it's being held in this web. Okay, corporately, they represent the bride of Satan. So that's what's so sad. And a lot of them, so there's not just, you know, one little girl that says, okay, I'm a bride of Satan. Yeah, she married, maybe she went through a whole ceremony and she married Satan. But we're talking corporately here that this whole network that's over the nations because they're in every country they're in every city they they they're just all over um they've multiplied so much and oh, yeah. um as long as they can stay hidden that's that's the whole thing they want to stay undercover under wraps and they do the do of the cult while they stay undercover and that's why we're encouraging survivors to come forward as an adult and take responsibility. And then it's going to start breaking. This web is going to start ripping. And that's what we pray, is that this web will rip and that the, that the survivors will come free, that their neshama be released. Yes. That gave okay. me chills. <laughs> okay. So what you also have in second heaven is a false new Jerusalem. Isn't that interesting? Because... We know that in third heaven, there's a, there's a new Jerusalem that's going to come down to earth and the bride is preparing herself. We know that's in Revelation, but Satan's a copycat. So there's a false Jerusalem in second heaven, which is the exact copy of the true, Jerus of the true new Jerusalem. And so there's do you false... learn this from the survivors or is this from yeah. the Bible? Yeah, they okay. tell you. They tell you. Okay. And it's not one. We test it. Over right, and right, right. over and over to make sure, you know. Right. And then there's a false temple, you know, because we know in, in God told Moses, he took Moses to heaven and he showed him the temple in third heaven. He showed it to him and then he said, go and build an exact um, replica on earth. And he had to have the measurements exactly. He was so meticulous about how the temple had to look because it had to be the exact copy of what was in third heaven. And so oh Satan goodness. goes and he builds a copy in, in second heaven. So now you arrive and you, oh, I see this, you know, and I see a city of gold or I see a temple or this. So are you in third heaven or are you in second heaven? Because the deception, that's how Satan deceives us. Uh, and you talk, about, you talk about Kundalini. Here it is. Yeah. You are seeing what you think is in third heaven, but you have to pray and check, you know, am I being deceived here? Because mm -hmm. Satan is such a deceiver. He's a master deceiver. Yeah. All right. And then there's a, a satanic bridal chamber in second heaven, which is over the temple mount. And, you know, when, when the Jews get married, when, when, when the, the, the Jewish people get married, they, they have what they call a chuppah, which is a bridal chamber. It's four poles, and then they could put a prayer shawl over it or, you know, just make it up beautiful like that. And the symbolism is very, very powerful. And so um, what Satan has done is a bridal chamber in second heaven and so every time the survivor meets with him to be impregnated he takes them into this chamber into this marriage chamber in second heaven so many of them have reported um the rape of satan happening here in this wow. in this marriage chamber so it's over the temple mount 
So he's really copying everything. Satan's and one attack. of the ladies in the in the chat, which I think is very very true, she said it makes streets street smarts takes on a new meaning. You know, thinking about being at the at the temple and and seeing uh, the golden streets. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really cute. So I thought so I'd share true. that. So true. So true. Okay, Satan's attack is focused against the Jews, which is what happened Second World War. It took them out. Then they say, okay, then we're going to take the, so we take the Saturday people, then we take the Sunday people. So that those that are lukewarm, the Christians are being targeted, and those churches are going down. And many, you know what is going on in the news, how many leaders are going mm -hmm. down. And then, of course, the Gentiles, um, all the other religions. So that's kind of like the order that, that he attacks. And so we see, of course, um, One World Order. I don't know if you've seen the latest Amazon building. I'm sorry, I, I don't have the slide up. Wow. Just, um, I'll send you, I'll send we you can a Google it. photograph. Yeah, very interesting. The latest one looks exactly like this Babylon. Look, this is the Tower of Babel. That's half finished. Mm -hmm. And this is standing in Brussels. Um, you know, right there at the border with France and Brussels, they're, 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 um, they're interlinked there in Europe. And so um, it's a one world government. Now, you know, I've been teaching one world government for all the years I've been in ministry. We are seeing, really seeing things happening now that we've never seen before. We really Absolutely agree. Living, yeah, we're living truly in in the end of, you know, of, of what we've been talking about. And then singularity, I don't know if you know, the whole thing about singularity is where we are busy creating a monster that is just in technology that's just gonna take over and we're not gonna be able to stop it. It's, there's right. no turning back. There's no turning back. And I know that um, Google is, is going on to, and Facebook and they're going into this, world Metaverse. of just attainment and yeah never return it's it's just we've got to a place that things have just gone too far so yeah. um we've seen things one religion one world religion um one ruler so there's going to come a savior that will stand up um and and will say i've got the answer <clears throat> so and then this is interesting the one new man, you know, the Bible that's, says that's that happening God says everywhere one now. Yes. And the, the children are so confused and little ones are being encouraged mm -hmm. while they are experimenting and going through normal growth stages yep. and phases and questions. They're being told, you know, if you if you grow up like a little tom, no, you know, just a little bit, a little tomboy, you know, just a little bit tomboyish, and oh, you know, you, yep. you you love the shooting and the fighting and the whatever, and now suddenly your periods start. It's like, come on, you know, I don't want this woman stuff, but it's a transition. Yep. And we all go through it, and you've got to work through it. But what totally happens agree. now? You get told. You know, just become a little boy now, and 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 you're too young in your mind to know. You've just got to be encouraged. Go through the phase. It's a development stage, you know. And and so there's such confusion going on here. So in the cult, they've got the X Y project. So it's male and female. It's one new man, and you know we have Baphomet who is the big goat god that is in Satanism, and he's got breasts, he's male and female. So- And, and he's, animal. <laughs> yeah, and animal, that's right. Yeah. yeah. All right, so now we see, we are already seeing the one world religion coming together. I mean, that's that we can see, you know, things are, people are saying, you know, we just listen to some of the things coming from Italy and so on. Oh, so, yeah. Now we want to understand the bloodlines. What's our time, Common? How's the time going? However much time you have, I'm perfectly happy. Right. <laughs> so whenever you All want right. to close out, close out yeah, and we can finish more long. later. 
all right, this isn't too long. So we just want to run through the bloodlines. And um, Revelation 16, verse 13 says, I saw three loathsome spirits like frogs from the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, and from the mouth of the false prophet. And so you will find in a survivor, there are parts that are trained under the dragon, parts trained under the beast. When they trained under the beast, they get made like little animals. They get put into cages naked and meat, raw meat and stuff just thrown at them. And they have to sit in their own um, feces and, you know, urine and all of that. And really, um, it's even like worse than animals. You treat animals better than what they are treated. And so uh, uh, Joseph Mengele was very well known for the cage, for cages. And so when that beast part of them comes out, they growl. Um, they really believe they're a beast. They don't believe they're human. And um, they got claws. They show claws. They show teeth. Um, they they can actually, um, you know, with it depend on what beast they were looking at. If they were put with monkeys, they make like the monkeys. The mouth goes wide open, and they show the teeth. And so it's this is a this is a very evil, very very bad. That they they'll do anything. So these are normally the killers. These are normally the assassins. They feel nothing because they're in an animal state. So all they do is eat and have sex and sleep. You know, that's how they, that's what they believe. They're, they're, they're a beast. They're part of the beast. They're under the beast and they're part of the beast program. So and then the false, so terrible. And then the false prophet. And you will find that a lot of them are prophetic because they are so spiritual. They're so tuned in to spirits. So they would be able to prophesy. So they impress the church very much because of the accuracy of seeing things in the spirit. Oh, I see this and this and this in you. And they're accurate because they, th their senses have been so super enhanced that they can discern things around them that we can't. So they are really trained very well. And when you well, we're are, all getting better, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. But one of the things that you can use as like a marker, if you're in the presence of someone that's really strong prophetic, but they make you feel um, lower then, they make you feel less then, yep. they, they can't kind of... You know, Peacock. have got this, it, you yeah. know, this pride and this attitude. That's a Jezebelic. Then you know there's something wrong. You know, there's there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of flesh going on. Um, although they could be channeling spirits that are telling them things, and it could be that that's the way that they're getting a platform in the church. Right. So they can destroy churches this yeah. way. You know. So. Again, for the survivors listening, please do your homework. And that is do your petitions, do your petitions. Before you go to church, do your petitions, stand in the gap. Don't be the victim, move over and take your place as an adult and take the responsibility. I'm not going to attack. I'm not going to be doing stupid things in church. Father, I don't want to work against your body. I don't want to work against your bride, you know, so that they, they can just do their homework. All right, so what we then see here is the High Council of Satan. Um, you've got the dragon, the false prophet, and the beast. There you've got the three, and then Satan's thrown in the middle. And so we just see how the High Council of Satan, always the High Council is 13. There will be 13 of them in a High Council, whether it's human, Nephilim, or fallen angel, there's always 13. All right, that's we know that number thirteen has been a big number in the. Is that copying something from from God too, or no? Um, well, 12, 12 disciples. Right. No, that's the copy. So yeah, um, yeah, he tries to 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 play that game. So Satan is so invested in the principle of bloodlines. He knows the word, the Bible, better than most Christians and knows that the sins of the fathers give him access to families for many generations. 
So he yeah. knows this principle and he specializes on bloodlines. We are now going to give a very brief rundown of the history of the world. So this is just in a nutshell. And it's about Nimrod that was the one that built the Tower of Babel. And we know that the Bible says that Babylon is going to be rebuilt. It's going to be Jerusalem and Babylon. Those are the two cities in the world that will be opposing each other. And so we see Nimrod um, bu busy building and we see Babylon being built today. As we've just seen, it's, there's a building standing in Europe. And if you look at the new Amazon building, you're going to see another Babylon tower. And so um, Babylon and the king named Nimrod in Genesis 10, when he starts to build this tower, he was the embodied leopard king. So um, when you look at the ancient, the kings and the queens, the, their capes and their, you know, their shawls and, and their fur, you will always see the, the spots. So you'll see the leopard, the leopard. So the leopard is, um, they, they would mix animal and human and um, even, you know, in South Africa with the African kings, um, they all want to be the leopard king because they know the leopard is, of the big five, you know, of the big five animals that we have, the leopard is the one that's really um, a, a serious, a serious one of the big five. So, um, you know, it, it comes back to, to, you know, look at the pictures of the kings and the queens of the royals and you'll see the spots. And this represents the first type of antichrist. So that was Nimrod. And verse nine tells us, that he was a mighty hunter for or against the Lord. And so we've got Nimrod um, that is now busy building this tower, but he's also a hunter. He was a hunter of men. It wasn't animals or, you know, whatever food. It was, he was fighting against God. The ancient Jewish uh, tradition states that Shem, one of the sons of Noah, was the one who stood up to Nimrod and then after killing him, cut him up into 13 pieces. Again, 13 pieces. So this is Jewish tradition. This is what they say. So Shem is the line of Jesus. You know, that's the bloodline of, of the three sons. So you see Shem is the line of Jesus. So the history of the warfare between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman and the lineage of the Antichrist continues to this day, culminating with the Battle of Armageddon. So we know that inside of a survivor, they also have warriors that are trained and they are trained for the final battle of Armageddon. So they'll always talk about Armageddon, the, the soldiers, the, there's some sleepers that are still sleeping, but as they get closer to the, to the actual war of Armageddon, they will be woken. Those are the super soldiers. Okay, the French and Charlemagne King Charles I, which started way back in the 8th century already. It started with the French. And so it's interesting the role that France is playing today as well in what's going on in the world around us. So history tells us that it was during this time period that Satan decided to regather together in Charlemagne that which was scattered in Nimrod. So now we have eight um, centuries that have gone past and Nimrod's pieces are now cut up and now they decide they're going to gather. Now they want to put it all back together because they want the secret of Nimrod. And so the gathering or the reuniting of that which represents the 13 pieces of Nimrod. Now this is the Merovingian um, in the 12th century was the Merovingian bloodline. So if you say today, I'm a royal. You have to prove that you come from the Merovingians. That's the whole thing. You must be able to say that. And so Charlemagne's line then became the Merovingian bloodline. All the kings of the earth today have to prove their bloodline comes from Charlemagne. So that is how do I know, um, you know, I mean, you can do DNA, you can do um, the the the. The, the tests and you can see what is your bloodline. And so um, the Druidic uh, bloodlines, history tells us that Julius Caesar was the one who was instrumental 
in outlawing the Druidic um, religion. Because of practice of human sacrifice in the Roman province of Gaul. Again, Gaul, which is France. So we can just see how, you know, how France played a huge role. And even today, there's a lot going on. So the Kingdom of Gaul, France and Germany, had three divisions within the Druidic culture. They had religion, so that they were like their pastors, their reverends. They were warriors. And then there were workers or farmers. So the Druids um, were, were uh, the Druid high priests and they would do the prayers. They would, you know, they would follow them. They would worship the four elements, um, wind and earth and fire and um, help. Um, wind, earth, fire, and earth. water. Oh, water, yeah. Water, water. <laughs> yeah. The first Sorry, one I is had spirit. my mute on. I was, I was so, saying. So, um, was... you know, the... Oh, you were saying it. Okay. All right. So what happened was that um, the, the, the Druids were the most ancient, you know, and they, they were all over. The, the, they were starting in Europe and they were busy moving. And wherever they ritual sites were they would build a city around around their ritual sites so if you have a bloodline all of us well most you know if we if we look at our lives and where we come from um we always say to even those that are here in south africa that come from 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 europe go and look at your family crest and have a look what you know what's your background what's your bloodline and so here in africa we've got egypt and all the Egyptian gods, which are very, very strong and very powerful. And you know how that plays a role in Freemasonry. So in every South America, you've got very strong spirits going on there. So, you know, Australia, everywhere all over the world, there are the first nations that had these ancient gods and they were worshiping the four elements. So Druid training included many secrets in the training. They were forbidden to write anything down. This is very interesting. They were forbidden to write anything down. And um, so to keep the secrets, the women were abused, conditioned, and trained to hold the secrets in power. Wow. But how? How? Watch. Through sexual rituals, these powers and knowledge were transferred. So no words. But the woman would have sex with the men. And they would download to the men the secrets. So by the time they get up, after they've had their sexual game, they would then have information imparted to them. Because through the spirit, from spirit to spirit, information right. gets lost. So they could keep secrets because nothing's written down, nothing's spoken. It's all through sex. So now can you understand the woman that started to speak up in the, in the United States about being government slaves? Right. Because they were being used exactly like these women. Right. Of that's why Druidism and the oak tree is the foundation of all of the occult in the world and mind control. And so the woman would be, would be, they'd be updated through the fallen angels. They'll get blueprint plans. So they'll have sex with fallen angels. And then they'll be taken immediately to the men, the kings of the earth, the politicians. And they will have oh. sex for them. Wow, that's and the knowledge that. from the fallen angels will be given to the kings of the earth through sex. Wow. And so how does that bring in pedophilia then? Or any any of like the children piece of it? Well, the children are have to go through those rituals. Okay, got it. Trained so that when they are grown up they become carriers of the secrets. Yeah. So, 
you talk about spy work. I mean, everything was always sex. I mean, look at James Bond. You know, it was always they didn't have to speak. They didn't have to do anything. Wow. It was just sex. And so through spirit to spirit communication, they downloaded what the kings of the earth, because remember, we're being controlled from second heaven. We're being controlled and they saying what must go on on earth. And so they use the woman and they download into the woman and the, then the woman get taken to the men and they pass on those secrets. Man, that really yeah. brings home, like I really didn't ever put two and two together, even though I know that when, you know, someone has sex with someone, you become one. Yeah. And I, I never thought of it as a way of passing on the scroll of, you know, secrets. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And so that's why they could not catch them for so long because nothing was spoken. It was just sex. And so, um, and they wanted to keep all of this under wraps. But what has happened is that people have come out and they've started to talk and they've yep. started to tell. And so and they've broken their programming, like like Kathy O'Brien. Right. Oh, yeah. She and her husband, they broke her yes. programming. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, Beautiful. yeah, this has been, you know, this has been the secret for so long and people didn't know. Yeah, Church thank you know. so much. Wow. Just Okay, so amazing. to obtain the highest ranking in Druidism, the priests of Gaul had to go to the Isle of Man. I don't know if you've been there. Mm -mm. The Isle of Man is an island off the UK. And um, we went there. Very interesting. They've got cats without tails. That, that, that fascinated me. But there's very ancient Druid history going on there. Um, and they have like a museum where you can walk through. And it's almost like you're back in those, in those days. And, you know, you can experience what it was like to be a Druid and what was going on and how cold it was and what was going, you know, the life that they lived. But that's where you go. If you go for your initiation, the highest ranking, they go there to the Isle of Man. And I mean, that's the Isle of all the money where, you know, all the money is. And so even to this day, this is still the place of obtaining the highest ranking in Druidism in the UK and international Illuminati. So it's just interesting. And then you look at the surnames of the people that live on the island, very interesting mm -hmm. surnames. And so Druidic as secret rituals and practices are also known as the ancient secrets of Babylon. And so you've got, um, these are Druids that are at Stonehenge in England, and they are busy worshiping, worshiping the sun, the rising of the sun, um, you know, solstice, um, they are there, they gather, they gather with the solstices and, um, yeah, they do, they, one, one of the head of the churches there was also, also a Druid high priest. He was fulfilling both roles. So interesting, but bloodline, again, there's a lot of bloodline stuff that would stand up here. So if you are not cleaned up, but this is still speaking on your bloodline it's in second it's stored in second heaven it's registered there that means that you're going to you know be delivering mixed seed so it's so important to clean up all right so let's look at dan we call him dan let's look at his conception and the the 13 top fathers or kings kings of the earth uh came together to impregnate, impregnate dan's mother a culmination of the seed of all 13 top kings of the earth. So what happens is um, 13 uh, Nephilim and 13 human, they always work together. So the kings of the earth, he's he is also a golden oldie. So he is um, of the first that started to talk and to bring all of this stuff out, um, that started to expose it in my world that, that I know. And, um, so they, they start with number one, and uh, the father number one that impregnates, well, well, ejaculates, and then goes round, 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 all the way around, you know, with all the men. So you can you can just think, um, you know, so what that like, what the mom yeah. feels. It's horrific. The main 
for his, as the father was King George VI. And um, his real name was Joseph Collins. Interesting, because it's hidden. It's a hidden family. Collins was a hidden family who represented the culmination of all 13 kings plus Satan. Wow. So um, you, this Col that's what I'm saying to you. If you go to the Isle of Man, you look at some surnames, you're going to find Collins mm -hmm. and uh, a few others. So um, this is so this is King George the sixth, and um, he was like the main sperm donor. King George V ruled in England. He was also related to Germany. After World War I, he distanced himself from Germany. And he's now, known now as the House of Windsor. His firstborn, Edward, was to take the throne. The House of Windsor, the Nazis' Germanic ancestry, is prominent over 13 kings. So it's this, you know, that if you've got a royal and they have 13, the top 13 bloodlines, so one of each of, of the top 13 bloodlines, they are very special. I mean, the cult looks after them and they are highly ranked and they really, um, you, know, you know, the whole shape shifting into dragons and all of that stuff. That's what happens on that level. Then you will find royals that may have 11 of the 13 or nine of the 13. Then, then it's a little bit, you know, you don't, you, you don't have the 13. So you, your ranking is a little bit lower. All right. So Dan was born in 1948 and that's when Israel became a nation. So that's a whole, that was a pivotal point in the history when Israel became a nation. This newly created bloodline was called Collins, a very well-known surname on the Isle of Man. Stuart is also a very well-known surname. All right, so that's 48. Now that's just after Second World War. Enough Jews, 6 million Jews have died. They've paid the price. And what happens now? There's enough blood, Jewish blood, so they can now open up the portal that the fallen angels can come through again and come and, and visit the woman on earth. So this was like the beginning of the end of the last period that we're living in. It started in 48 when Israel became a nation. Now, if you go up north in Israel, and you go to a, a Mount Hermon, which was the Mount of Transfiguration, you will find Nimrod's castle on top of Mount Hermon. And that was the mountain where, um, where Jesus stood and, and, and he said to Peter, um, when Peter said, you are the Christ, he said, because of what you've said, on this, I'm going to build my church. It wasn't on Peter himself, but it was on what he said. And he saw that Jesus was the Christ. He was the son of the most high God. And so Jesus went right to the mountain where this portal is going to open up. And he challenged. He challenged them there. And he trans there was the transfiguration. And Moses came and Elijah came down, you know, came, met with him. And so it's very interesting to just see why did Jesus go there? Because there was something he knew that was going to come in 1948 in our lifetime that was going to, um, you know, bring a lot of attack. All right. So what we see is how is Druidism mind control and the New World Order practiced today? So the women are used in the same way as they have been used for generations. They are wanted for their wounds. That's it. All they want you for is the womb. They want to make Nephilim babies. Wow. And they That's want, the, and it's really like literally a stargate. Like this yeah. will bring you to the third heavenly. Yes. Yeah. So what happens here is, um, the, the, the women now um, get impregnated. They get called the Nephilim mothers. So this is since 1948, this has been going on with the women. So we have women that are still alive today that were part of, this is the Hitler project. Wow. So in 44, it started 
and 48 was when the portal was opened, um, you know, and, and the fallen angels started coming through. And all they want the woman for is the womb because now she can bear a demigod. And that's what Hitler wanted. He, he wanted this because Satan has a deficit in his army. He's only got a third of the angels that fell with him. But two thirds are with, still with God. And so he's got to make up for the deficit. And he's making up by breeding Nephilim. That's how he, he makes so up his deficit. So disgusting. Oh, my gosh. He's it such is. a pain in my it butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh and so the, the fathers of these girls of the royals because remember that you've got to have the special bloodline to get what they did was they put a third dna strand which enabled the woman to bear the seed of satan to get pregnant from satan himself and to carry his seed there had to be a third strand dna because all of us humans have only got two strands and so the third strand is a spiritual strand and that's satan's seed and so they are sold by their hidden biological fathers to become cult prostitutes isn't that sad i mean these Horrific. girls are in this whole this this game they play which is so evil it's the cult, greatest betrayal there is betrayal, you know, betrayal. yeah and then they want their wounds to produce hybrids that's bottom line so the women are chosen by Satan and then powered up and conditioned throughout their lives through sexual intercourse with Satan, fallen angels, and Nephilim. So your governmental slaves that were powering up governmental leaders, you will not find a low ranking yeah. doing that. You will only find a royal. Wow. Because she has to receive her information from a fallen angel. And then she passes it on. And then she, she has to have that third strand. Yes. Yes. Wow. And then, so that she can give birth to the Nephilim. All right. So they will receive secret knowledge and power, which they will then transfer to the kings of the earth. And so there, there's a whole lot of how they control the world, what the plans were that we're seeing going down now was in preparation years ago. They handpicked young global leaders who are now sitting as yep. heads over nations. Yes. And they are being controlled completely. <laughs> and you can tell because they don't act like a man or a woman. <laughs> exactly. And so you have these women that go and give the secrets and the power to them. So that, that is what happens. And for example, see the reports of where Hitler and the Nazi scientists received very advanced knowledge from. You can look at History Channel and you can see how Vernon von Braun describes, they asked him, where did you get your knowledge from? And he said, from them. And he pointed the UFOs, the first mothership yep. was what they called uh, the bell. Hitler had this called the bell. You can Google. It's oh, there. I've the seen it. Yeah. There. yeah. Yeah. So that's where they get the advanced knowledge from and how to right. make. And this is one of the things that frustrates me because I see so many people and they're, you know, they claim that they're super soldiers or that they've experienced UFOs. So they know that they're real. And and it's, I wish that they would just be open-minded enough to listen to what you have to say, because to me, it might plant the seed that could make them go, okay, wait, this is possible because they can do the changeling. They can mm -hmm. do something over a, a, a span of 20, 30, 40 years, and then compress it into my experience. Um, they they literally can fake all of it. It's it's quite frightening, but I also think it would be freeing for them to not feel like such victims of like the super soldier programs or whatever. Um, I would love to do a show with you on that because I know nothing really about it other than just intuitively, I believe you. I believe that this is 
how they get people to not be freaked out by the fact that they're fallen angels. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then we see um, the presidential sex slaves through ritual sex today. Women are used to transfer demonic power and information from Satan himself to top world leaders, the kings of the earth. And so it's, it's still carrying on today. This is large amounts of money is exchanged when the handler or the father allows his conditioned sex slave to transfer the power and information to world leaders in the religious, political, and economic sphere of influence. And so that's why you have Mammon working very strongly. The spirit of Mammon is always at, at these negotiations you have the spirit of mammon. And so when you um, pray around, uh, you know, helping the survivor to come free of all of this stuff, um, then you must pray around mammon as well, because she was sold. She was sold, you know, but, but, but the good news is, is that she gets bought with a currency that is, is not silver or gold. She gets bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. And that yes. blood has the final and last say in her life. And it is it's so it's the pure blood because there's no iniquity. There's no contamination in the blood of Jesus. And that is why he can buy them back from this mess because they get sold for silver and gold. And there's a lot of money. And they also can get, um, they can also get, you know, money in the bank they can also, so the World Bank, you know, they, they're shifting around and all sorts of things going on. And also where they are, they have connections, but um, it is, it's just the whole thing about silver and gold that gets yeah. moved around. They get bonds, they get, you know, as gifts for what they're doing um, as the, as the slaves. So that those are the things that they give up. Right. They let it go. Because what they get through Jesus Christ, you cannot buy with silver or gold. And yes. um, he that's how he cleans them up and buys them back. He buys yeah. them with his very own blood. And we've so got that, people that are listening that, that, you know, think that they might be these people. And when you do that and you get that beautiful look on your face, Amanda, I guarantee yeah. you, you are literally transferring beautiful, you know, hope to these people these people, men and women, you know, it's both. Hallelujah. Okay. So what we have here is um, understanding the bloodlines of the new world order, just so that it's not, I'm just doing a little diagram to make it easy. So we start with Adam and the fall of man. And then we have Semiramis and Nimrod with Babylon. All right. So that's, that's in Genesis where we, we read about that. And then the next is Charlemagne. And the, then we get Merovingian. So 8th century, now 12th century, Merovingian. Do you know that the first, there was a Holocaust, a Jewish Holocaust that took place in the 12th century as well? No, that didn't was, know that. I, I, found very, I didn't know either. That was very interesting. And then you have, from the Merovingians, you have the Druids. And that's why the oak tree and the Druids are so, so important to understand. You know, what is it all about? And how they have taken control of the world. And then from the Druids, you have the 13 top bloodlines plus Satan um, over the nations. Look how he positions himself. And then 1948, you have the start of Israel. And then you have, um, of course, mind control that kicks in in, in, in in the fullness of it. I mean, you've you've had it coming along all the time, but in the fullness of our lifetime period, it basically started in 44 was the project where, where the, the babies, you know, and the Petri dish and all of that stuff was done. But in 48, they actually opened up that portal. So then you have the mind control and um, the end time plan of investment of Satan on the bloodlines. And so again, you have the false bride, which is the 12 tribes, um, you know, the whole falling away, um, that had taken place. You've got Semiramis and you've got Nimrod and Babylon. And uh, then you've got the Antichrist 
and you've got the kings of the earth, Charlemagne, again, the t uh, 12 bloodlines and the Collins bloodline. And then at the end, you've got, a, sorry, oh, that's gone too fast. Uh, let me just go back. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, slow down. Oh, that was a bit quick. Yeah. So um, I just want to run that through quickly. Um, so the false bride was the whole Babylon and Semiramis, Charlemagne and Collins. And then you have a surname again hidden, which is full full fit. Never heard so that you, one. So you can you you've heard of that one? No, I have not heard of oh, that. You one. haven't. Okay. Okay. I've so heard Collins, of Collins, but not Fulford. Collins. Yeah. So Fulford is where it's culminated. It's like a, a new template that was formed. Collins was the royals, everything to do with King George the Sixth and the Royals. Now the Fulford, the Bible says that in the days of Noah, the fallen angels are going to be able to choose any woman they want. And so through Fulford, they can now pick and choose anyone. Obviously, the bloodline is going to be open, but it doesn't have to be royal. And we have found that already, that girls are having experiences. Um, obviously, the bloodline is open. There's stuff on the bloodline. And um, then they're having these sexual experiences or they're getting abducted and taken up and, and then experiment sexual stuff done to them. So this is now on the forefoot is a new template, which is taking any woman they want. Wow. So this is scary. I mean, that's. And so this is really to just fortify um, how many people Satan has on his side. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It's quite scary to see, you know, how many he's already won over, especially when it came to to the big C, um, when the whole world shut down, every plane stood still, every boat stood still, everybody stood still. And you thought, it's where terrific. did they get control? Where? I didn't sit still. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta we, yeah. we can't sit still for for the demonic ever ever uh, again we gotta we gotta yeah. share this with the world no all right there's a demonic triangle which is um in in jerusalem mount Hermon, the temple mount and galgotha so this is a demonic triangle and the gateways and portals from these the three points very interesting and that's why Satan has got his position. I mean, we know that Jesus went to Mount Hermon and there was the Mount of, um, the, it was the Mount of Transfiguration, you know. So, so there was a big challenge going on there. Golgotha is where he was crucified and the Temple Mount we know is, um, you know, what's going on in Jerusalem and, and, and he's going to come back to, he was bringing in the new Jerusalem, you know. So this is, he's positioned himself. He's a copycat. And he's just positioned himself. So, um, yeah, it's just to, to make people aware. And then from Golgotha, there's a portal to Tartarus where the fallen angels, you know, oh. that whole thing with the fallen yeah. angels. Yeah, Dr. Laura was on yesterday talking about Tartarus. Okay. Okay, good. Well, that's good. Okay, so I think... Um, this is the prayer journey that we did in, Ger in Germany to where we went to some of the high places where this Dan guy was um, involved. And these are just photos, so it's going to go quickly. Oh, my, my, my. I'm running through it now too quickly. I want to show you. This is a war memorial, um, and we have exactly the same replica in South Africa. Because yeah. the Third Reich was in Germany and the Fourth Reich continued in South Africa. South Africa is a key to New World Order. And we've got all the minerals. So it's the safe. You know, there's a lot of gold here. There's a lot of money. So um, here we, we have the war memorial. And um, there you have the, at the back, those faces are the, are the fallen angels. And the guys oh, the big standing faces. in the front. 
Yeah. Yeah. And the ones standing in the front are the Teutonic Knights, which are Nephilim. They're huge. They are huge. So you can imagine if that's a face of an of a fallen angel. So they try to 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 um, portray what a fallen angel would look like and what a a, a Nephilim would look like, and so the ch- the children of the fallen angels. So that's inside that building. Um, there you have him sitting right at the, he's huge and he's got a little child between his legs. So there you can see the pedophilia. Okay, how they were messing with children and also eating them. And then this is Michael. Michael, God says, is the archangel of, of Israel. Now, Germany with Hitler, they said that the Jews made a mess. And they have now adopted Michael, but this is a false Michael. This is not the true Michael. This is a fallen angel Michael, who is now the guardian angel of Germany. So, you know, you can see Michael. Wow, this is Michael. Or I call Michael, but be careful who you call. Yes, I I, I literally am so happy that you talked about this because there's a lot of people calling on him. Yeah, there's a false Michael. So you, if there's if you've got Germanic bloodline and you're part of this whole scene, you could be calling a false, you know, a fallen angel. Then we have the Teutonic Knights. There, they are just a better picture of them, a bit closer. Um, there's one closer with a child there. Um, this is New Schwanstein, and this is where Dan went and was crowned um, as a king of the earth. And we actually did a whole tour in this castle. It's called the Fairy Castle. I know Jesse um, has talked about this castle and, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just you know the, the pictures uh, of of the slaying the dragon, Michael slaying the dragon. You know that that's a big one always in Europe. Um, this is an island, um, just very. It's it's actually um, very close to, to to Germany, but they did a lot of rituals, and this is where they did drowning rituals. So they, they were children, and they took them in front of this these three crosses, and they drowned them, and they were saying, you know, Jesus can't even come and help you, and so they did a lot of bad so bad evil. rituals here on this island, yeah. and then. Um, they also explained that at the very top, if you go, if you just follow, let your eye follow up to the top, there's like a little, a galley, you know, it, it forms like a galley with steps coming down. And they said it was filled with blood. There was so much blood that was running. Oh in my this gosh. Oh my gosh. We don't have an idea, you know, what these people go through. And he, there's the galley from the other side. Now you can see that that's why I took the picture was the blood. That was just running, you know, down. It, it, they, you, you don't realize how many people die when they have these rituals. And this is um, con- uh, Imperia Constance, which is what, uh, yeah, one of the ladies that was there. She, her name was Constantina, and so this is Lake Constance, and um, in her hand she's got a church leader and a politician, a king, a king of the earth. That looks very accurate. <laughs> very, very accurate. <laughs> a very, very accurate powerful. depiction of what I think they look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the hands in the hands of a Nephilim, yep. a lady Nephilim. There she is close up there. You can see the king and the, um, and the church the leader. The politician is dead on, man. Dead on. <laughs> common <laughs> all right and so just just a nephilim lookalike please it's not the real deal these are really just nephilim lookalike and um there was a guy that um i we we had done this whole trip and we had completed the journey and it was late at night and i was preparing to minister uh, you know for the weekend and I went to shower quite late. And um, I heard there was somebody in the shower next to me. 
you know, there were like a rows of showers and I took the shower and I heard and I, in my spirit, I knew it was a male. And I'm thinking, who's here? You know, it's nobody should be here. Um, we're alone upstairs. And so who's this? Anyway, as I opened the door after I'd finished showering, he opened the door and he had a towel around his waist and he um, his hair was back and and he I smelt his deodorant or aftershave or whatever. And he said to me, good evening in German. And I answered him back and I said, good evening. And as he walked, you know, out the bathroom and, and across the hall, I'm thinking, who is this guy? Is he a student? What's he doing here? But I didn't, didn't know what was going on. But anyway, um, the next, about two, three days later, the group that was with us, one of the survivors um, started to have serious attacks and memories and things coming back. And wow. she said, but my Nephilim son was there. Wow. And I, I tell you, if I'd known... <laughs> I don't know if I would still be here today, but I didn't know. <laughs> but, that was my but all I can say is he looks pretty human. He looks very much like us. You, I would not have known, but I didn't look, 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 you know, at him. This is someone else that, that said this is what her son looks like. So it's a close picture of, of what he looks like. And this was another one that she also said, this is a lookalike of her son. So as he was growing up. Yeah, so um, it's just to show people that they look very yeah. normal like us right. today. All right, so a word to the counselors. God's strength is perfected in our weakness. And he has come through every time. Every time he's come through. When we are weak, he is strong. Full integration is a place for the Lord established in a person's heart. When a person is fully integrated, they will be in a place of repentance and that absolute brokenness before God, a place of brokenness and humility before the Lord and man. And so I really want to encourage counselors, um, you know, get trained up, understand this, and you trust God. He'll yeah. take you through when you don't know where you're going and you don't know what yes. to do, he is there and he will help us. So there it is. I trust that you have, um, you've learned something and um, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, Carmen, it's been a heavy Thank one. You. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, this was great because so many times um, I'm actually sharing um, what I've already seen and I want to bring it, but this time you brought stuff that like Jesse and, and Dr. Laura that I'm like, whoa, this is amazing. Um, and one of the things I, I really want to address is uh, I want everyone to know, literally cannot get into Amanda. Amanda's got a list so long. I've even tried to get my personal people with her. Um, and But what Amanda's doing is giving us her time. She's teaching us her tricks. She's sharing with us the way that we can get access, the way that we can grow. And um, and if you're, there are so many videos. So who else, you're, you're on Chantal's channel. You've done some stuff with Dan Duvall. You have your own uh, Canaan Ministries. Is there anywhere else that people can find your work? And with you, with you. Okay, I, so, you, yeah, you froze on, for a second. So sorry, I, I didn't sorry. hear anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, on my website, I have, if, I'm, if I have spoken elsewhere, then my PA puts it onto my website so that Perfect. people can find it or a link, you know, or whatever. But, you know, they can go and look what's on the website. So there's right. a lot of information. And, and then let's assume that somebody's in the worst situation. They have no help. They have handlers. Um, this can still work. They can still yeah. read. They can still pray. They can still access um, the breaking down of the, the Kabbalah tree, so to speak, right? right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Definitely. I just want to give people hope because there's, you know, people yeah, in here I like, I need to get a hold of Amanda. 
Um, but this is the beautiful thing about the time that you're giving is you're multiplying yourself, you know, through the quantum world of technology. <laughs> it, it can do good things. It can. It can. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much. Do you mind closing in prayer? No, sure. Sure. Thank you. Father, we just say thank you that we could sit around your feet and just speak about who you are. Father, this has been a tough message. And I know that there are survivors out there, overcomers, that are crying out for help. And Holy Spirit, you, you are all over. You are omnipresent. And I pray that you will hear everybody's cry, that you will answer their prayers, that you will reach out to them, your right arm of deliverance, that you will take them, Father, as they, as they learn more and more about what happened to them and get greater understanding. And Father, I just pray that you will supernaturally come and meet them. I have heard the most amazing testimonies of how you yourself came and has set your people free as they have desperately cried out to you. And Father, I pray for workers. I pray for more and more counselors that they will be trained and that they will really supernaturally understand how these things work in the spirit. Father, because the first time you hear all of this stuff, it seems so overwhelming. It just seems like, how am I ever going to learn this? But Father, it's slowly but surely, you open up, you enlarge our spirits, and you open up our understanding, and you give us revelation. And the most important revelation is to know who you are to know your word, to know our weapons, to know how to fight, how to stand and take courage. And that is my prayer for every person, Father, whether they are survivors, overcomers, or whether they are counselors, workers in the field. My heart is, Father, that you will encourage everyone, spe specifically in these last days, that we are seeing the things happening around us. We are seeing a whole world coming under a global control. Stuff we've spoken about for so long is really happening. And the only way that we can, that we can stand is to tap in to your anointing, to, to stay very close to you to hear your heartbeat, to know who you are. That is the most important, Father. And so I just pray for, for every person that will listen to, to what we've shared tonight, that they won't be despondent, they won't be filled with despair, but they, that they will be filled with hope and they will be filled with courage and, and greater understanding of what's really going on. And so, Father, come, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us come in agreement with what you are praying, Jesus, because we are seated with you in heavenly places. And we just thank you. What a privilege it is to know you. Father, we would never be able to stand in these last days if we didn't know you. And Father, we pray that you will enlarge your kingdom, bring in more and more souls, bring them in, Father. Let your kingdom be strengthened and pull them out of the clutches, pull them out of the spider web, Father, this web that is over the nations. Bring them out, Father, we pray. And only you can do it. And as you come riding, on your white horse, Jesus, you come with a flaming sword and you can rip and tear that web that is over the nations to set the captives free. And we pray for that 
in the name of Jesus. Bless everybody that is listening. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are so good at that. And it's so funny because while you're praying, I'm thinking about something and then you pray about it because <laughs> you prayed about the web right when I was thinking about it. It was so amazing. Um, and I, I love the part about the heartbeat, following the heartbeat, like just, you know, if you're if you're out of sorts, really just try to tune into God's heartbeat and, and run <laughs> fast as you can. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Amanda. You are amazing, a blessing, and worth every minute I was waiting for you. <laughs> oh, thank you.